left curb and right curb and 90 side on the left and stay left until the exclamation mark in the bushes and then turning into the right curbstone and break hearts and let go turn in left curbstone end of the white wall on the right and back on the left side karmic transition on the brakes end of the curb turning in brakes turn in on the gas to the end of the left wall and flat towards the right side oh we can breathe a bit now okay left hander flat out to the left curbstone and stay left exclamation mark all brakes hearts to 125 on the left and turning in gently to the right curbstone on the gas smoothly to the outside and go flat out the next two kilometers ladies and gentlemen we will go flat out Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring Nordschleife, quite literally, last couple of days, you already know it, we are doing our first lap of the year where I will be taking you along the track, showing you some of its significant features, uh, to eventually also try to make you a safer driver by showing some reference points, some important things, some uh, things that makes you makes it quite challenging to drive, and also giving you some other interesting yeah, just details that you otherwise would miss in case you are driving fast. So you know what they say, life moves pretty fast, and especially if you're driving pretty fast on an Evergreen. Okay, let's not talk nonsense. Let's talk interesting things. And like, oh, some uh, greetings from Dutch friends. Gruten and Moff. Something, no folks. In any case, gruten or greetings are very important, but not as important as some reference points on the track. We start our walk here at Weerseifen, and when you exit Weerseifen, this is the opposite direction of the track, here, 90 sign, which is for some reason currently twisted, you might say that it is twisted because there is not going to be any speed limit in Breitscheid anymore because actually in the past Breitscheid where we're gonna go right now used to be uh, emergency or like an extra exit and entrance point where you could get off eat a currywurst or ice cream and then proceed with the second lap of the uh, second half of the lap or maybe you could just enter here and just do half a lap or like do groceries or whatnot but actually Nürburgring announced last winter or this winter that it will not be open anymore as a normal access point you can still exit it but not get back on again and it will be still be used for emergency personnel therefore speed limit still here remains so you should definitely slow down before that section because you do not want to crash into a recovery truck or into an ambulance which happened last year actually someone crashed into an ambulance and have to explain that to your insurance if you have any if you don't, you're going to have even bigger trouble. And the insurance topic we covered two videos ago, so check out that. So, right, let's proceed there and show you some significant features of it. First, a couple of reference points that should make this section for you easier, like the twisted 90 sign. For some reason, this exclamation mark is also kind of twisted. But exclamation mark is a nice turning point for the right curbstone over there. Just checking quickly if we can see any dot on the track. Ah, uh, well, yeah, okay, makes sense. Ideal reference point or ideal turning point is a bit further down the track over here for the braking zone to Breitscheid. But again, if you are new to the track, the exclamation mark sign, if it's twisted, it's easier to spot than a small dot if you're traveling fast. But again, when you're a beginner, you shouldn't be traveling too fast. <laughs> Aiming towards the right curbstone and then after that you will see an orange barrier on the right. Now depending on the type of car you're driving and the speeds that you're doing, orange barrier on the right is an okay-ish, it's a pretty late braking point already. I would suggest start braking as a beginner at the right curbstone, especially if you're driving in GT2 RSMR and you're going quite fast, you should be braking here at the right curb. Hmm, you can see actually quite some things from the fireworks. Not cool, not nice. And here as well. Why do people have to do it on the track? Annoying, disrespectful. This was obviously done by local people, because who else is going to be traveling all the way to Nürburgring to blow up some fireworks? Yeah, so, right curb, good reference point for braking. 
later an option leave at the orange barrier again orange barrier means that there is a safety pocket where you can get behind in case you have a breakdown or an incident or any type of incident including crashes so straight line braking and then a good reference point that is more visible than any dot on the tarmac is beginning of the curb slightly after that is the turning point towards the left curb stone unless it is wet because then you should stay on the outside completely the whole section because the inside is very slippery Now you have here the sign already, it says exit bright side for which you can exit or also entrance point for the emergency personnel. You have the 50 sign which shows that you should be doing somewhere around 50 kilometers per hour. That again is the official rule but it is not there's not someone standing here with a laser gun and uh, looking at you and you're going, going to be finding you if you're driving too fast again it's just safety precaution so whenever even if i'm driving here like usually i do somewhere around 80 kilometers per hour but not like 120 just be cautious be prepared to uh, come to a complete stop and don't be again that guy who crashes into an ambulance because well first of all that ambulance is on the way somewhere Second of all, it's just unthinkable, but unfortunately it has happened last year and also previously. And then, end of the curb, again, showing it from opposite direction, or the white dot as a turning point to the left curb stone. In my case, 2019, one of my worst crashes ever, just like completely lost concentration, dozed off and forgot to brake simply and went straight in the wall. This is the only concrete wall that you will find on the whole of the track. The reason for that is because, well, actually it's not the only concrete wall, but because you have in Kudabaka Hood, the bridge, you also have concrete wall, but it's more or less a straight another corner. Here you have public road, so this concrete wall avoids or prevents cars going over it and falling onto the public road. And over there you have the actual exit bright side. Just a closer look at the wall you can see some marks here and some of you might say like oh which one of this is yours Misha <laughs> well actually I know that the wall is being repainted quite often especially after my crash even in 2019 it was repainted just to keep things a bit tidy and nice but yeah this also shows that not only me but a lot of people unfortunately make the mistake but usually not by not breaking and ending up in the wall but actually the wet is the most challenging part because again do not go on the inside of the corner in the wet because it's very slippery so you will end up under steering into the wall or actually spinning out over steering and maybe ending up there that's why those barriers here on the left are actually also new because of spinning out and going into there and here we have another dot which is a steering point towards the left curb stone before you proceed to the climb to X Mühle. Next to the left curb, actually small gentle braking. You don't have to brake much because actually the track is going uphill already by itself, which will slow you down in addition to the braking force that you will be applying. So small braking there. And then at the end of the curb, slightly before that, you turn into the right curb. And also that part is kind of challenging. But before we proceed to X Mühle up closer, I want to emphasize or actually show to you more in detail why it is important to slow down here for speed limit for more importantly for this emergency entrance or exit. So of course, first of all, you can have emergency personnel exiting here for which you should slow down, but actually more importantly for your own safety, if you don't mind crashing into the ambulance, how stupid as it may sound, for your own safety, it's also an emergency exit for, again, for emergency personnel, in particular recovery trucks from the company Lens. Their headquarters is literally next door here. It's like 300 meters from this exit. That's why they use this one and not the main one. And imagine, this is like what? We're going to start walking from this section. It is one, two, three, four five six seven eight nine like what nine meters roughly and how tall is the truck like a recovery truck and if he needs to make more than 90 degree corner to the right to the exit it will swerve all the way to the left to then proceed turning to the right so it will be blocking its way completely to be able to make this yeah, it's almost 180 degree corner to make this exit so yeah and honestly, sometimes, 
we've seen on Facebook groups such as Nürburgring Now, Nürburgring Live, people like posting a complaint like from one of the drivers like, oh my god, I was driving through here and the truck was just like parked here in the middle of the road and you know, I almost crashed into him. Well, dude, joke's on you. It's your own responsibility. But honestly, these kind of people exist and uh, yeah, I'm just... Telling you the facts, spitting facts, but in any case, enough about I hope now you understand why it is important to slow down for here. You don't have to drive in 50, but be cautious, be prepared that something might be here. Let's proceed to the turning point into X Müller. So here we have this nice dot. So in case you don't see it, you can just aim also towards the end of the curbstone. And then from now on, it's going to be a very hard for me <laughs> to talk because we actually hit the lowest section of the track. Brightshed is the lowest section of the track and after that now we proceed with a climb of 300 meters to the highest section of the track, the whole Acht. So it's going to be interesting. Aim for the right curbstone and then you can also aim for the end of this sound wall. I think it's a sound barrier wall towards that and be extra cautious because the left side, the exit point is quite slippery and also in the past, before the surfacing of 2019, this inside was the slippiest point in the wet but still on the dry, on the left side, with rear-wheel driven car because of the camber differences, yeah I'm losing breath already, cars lose traction and although it is straight, lose traction they end up spinning here on the right and hitting the barrier on the right. So you can see nice shiny barrier. One of my favorite fragments from last year when I was driving together with Norbert following another GT3 RS, you can clearly see how the car is breaking out and losing traction. So when you know of it, when you're aware of it, you just know, okay, I need to counter steer here or just go off the throttle. But when you don't, this might happen to you. <laughs> here even better indication, tire marks, skid marks on the right curb and the new beautiful shiny barrier. I had to walk back a bit to show you um, yeah, this beautiful view over Exmühle in the opposite direction, one of the most photogenic locations. <laughs> yeah, the biker, he was just like, nah, F that, I'm not gonna climb all the way there, I'm just gonna <laughs> exit the track earlier. <laughs> right, let's proceed to Lauda Links and Bergkrek, the most important corner of the track. And after the Exmühle you have a long straight. <laughs> Up until this dot that you can use as a reference point again for a turn and for louder links. Nowadays it's a flat out corner with pretty much any car. If you have ideal circumstances. So, <clears throat> sorry for that. What I want to say is what I have to say. Last year, the only person who lost his life here was actually in this corner by traveling fast. And unfortunately there was an oil spill and there was a um, recovery truck that was already also crashed due to the oil spill and then he crashed into the truck. So never assume that everything is safe unless you are driving on a race. Yeah, they always keep safety in mind. I know today's video of this series of a track walk has really a lot to do with safety, but then again, Evergreen is for no, not, not called for nothing, being the most challenging racetrack in the world. So don't assume things, be cautious. The other thing that I want to say is that after Lauda Lynx, where Niki Lauda almost lost his life in 1976, it is followed by Bergwerk, which is the most important corner of the track for lap times, for qualifying lap times, etc. And to preserve my battery today, because I'm running actually quite low now, um, I'm just gonna say two weeks ago I made a video explaining everything in detail how you should be taking this corner so check it out in the video description or probably also the first pinned comment below uh, and I will continue on towards mm, illusion left. Yeah I do have to show you the new barriers coming out of louder links if you're coming too fast and end up here 
um, yeah, and then there was mentioned you have bear quirk. And as mentioned in the explanatory video on how to take bear quirk, it's one of the slippiest sections of the track in the wet. Watch out, very slippy. The inside of the corner, that is. Yeah, I cannot help myself, even though I said to watch the video where I explained it more in detail. The inside of the corner is very slippery in the wet, because like uh, with other corners, you have here banking. So two reasons. A, the ideal line is you can see there a yellow dot, which is more visible than the white dot that's why it's there for the turning point for the right curb stone and it's also one of the creepiest or slippiest sections of the track creepiest in the dry because of all the rubber there slippiest in the wet because of all the rubber there so avoid that section avoid the inside when you're driving in the wet Not only because of the rubber because you can actually see the banking so all the water when it's wet is going to the inside so rubber water all in all very slippy stay away but alternatively if you are in the dry once you're next to the right curbstone you can go flat out full on the gas pretty much any car unless you have cold tires and you just entered from right side but otherwise flat on the gas because lots and lots of grip here and accelerate towards 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 can we see it can we see it yeah kind of the straight of Kesselschen and closer tal and thereby a very long straight very high speed straight this is why getting the exit right of Bergwerk is very important to achieve the highest possible speed for the optimal lap time interesting details that you would not spot when you drive here flat out so it's actually a curb stone like an actual curb how cute and even a sewage system it's good because it started raining and of course didn't take my umbrella I did take a rain jacket but hopefully I will not need it today another interesting detail that I haven't seen myself so here you have a curb and as you can see by the lack of grass cars run sometimes even over it like if you really want to push it really close to it but what i notice now by being here on foot is that the elevation difference with the grass is actually quite high which means that you should not push it because when you go on it it will definitely unsettle the car here especially you can see it's that it's almost a valley a micro valley you yeah, know very important so if you need to run on the curb or slightly off be cautious because this can really unsettle the car hmm and after the long flat out section of a triple left handers you move over to the right side of the track over here where you can see also our familiar dot which functions as a reference point for a turn in towards illusion left now this is a name that i came up with and why is it why do i decide to call it illusion left because this is actually a flat out section it's a flat out corner you still keep it flat now in the past you had those hedges here that you can see that actually have been trimmed since a couple of years but if you have a hedge you don't see where the corner is going towards but when you don't have a hedge you can have actually a very good outlook of what is happening important thing to know is again also here in the wet stay on the outside because in addition to the dry um to, to the rubber that is accumulating on the dry days on the left side it's also two different tarmac sorts so the old tarmac on the left and the new one on the right and also again extra banking makes uh, it extra wet extra slippery so yeah slippery when wet but otherwise it's a flat out section and this is also where 
Mara Engel when uh, doing the lap record for AMG GT, uh, AMG GT Black Series, yes, uh, lost very precious time because he had to slow down here because this section was still wet. <laughs> still his speed was close to 200 kilometers per hour which is quite significant but I would make actually a nice comparison video of a Black Series versus GT2 RS explaining the differences and where the car could be faster when it's going to do lap record attempt again and I'm sure it will I'm sure it will just to emphasize how old the tarmac is and I think this should be resurfaced next year look at the big cracks and we haven't had such a severe winter yet this year, but otherwise if water gets there, it becomes ice, it expands, it would become even worse. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there will be like some patches coming up halfway through the season next year, but this should definitely be replaced next year. It's quite bad here, quite bad. And now we are at Klosetal, on the way to Mutkurve, and I think by now it is a good time to say goodbye. It's been one of the longer series when it comes to this series of the first lap of the Nürburgring. We covered quite a lot of sections, a lot of safety aspects, a lot of interesting new things. At least I hope you found it interesting and will improve your knowledge of the Nürburgring to make you safer, faster, and just enjoy the track more. In any case, tomorrow, Mood Curve and a lot of other sections of the track. So subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell if you haven't yet. And see you tomorrow. And uh, hopefully also later this year in real life at the Nürburgring. Bye-bye.